Good morning all. Uh, so I'll give you a quick update on the uh, solar I installed like a, about a week ago now. Um, to see how many amps it's drawing, how, many, how much charge it's giving, sort of how useful it is. Um, and also an update on, you know, I've got an EcoFlow to go with it. Um, so that I can use that as um, an off-grid sort of power, you know, for kettles and uh, we're thinking about air fryer and some other pieces that we can use it for. So I'll give you a quick update on that as well. Okay, um, well, let's uh, pop on the roof. Um, so I bought this actually, the step here. So you can get them on uh, Amazon, but just um, just fits into the, the door lock bit here. And then it's got some rubber feet on here. Just lets you get up onto the roof a lot easier. So I'll do that now. So here's the solar panels that I fitted last week. Uh, so 200 watt, uh, two of these, um, and they're not too too difficult actually to to install. Um, so if you're thinking about it, I think it's quite it's worthwhile. Um, okay, so these are the solar panels. It's not um, really sunny right now. It's sort of overcast. Um, so we'll have a quick look at what it's um, what amps it's um, sort of supplying. This is. Um the last uh, install that I did on the MPPT controller so I added this load one which is the cigarette lighter which I'm using to trickle charge the EcoFlow um, so that just goes all around here up and then into there where the EcoFlow is sitting uh, sort of just inside so here there. we are it's um yeah as I said it's cloudy out there so it's not um no not direct sunlight or anything so I'm getting two amps um, which is more enough to start charging the battery, um, make sure it doesn't deplete, um, just keeps it topped up. So if it was uh, overcast, it'll easily, you know, keep your battery topped up, you know, when you're not using it. Um, but when you are using it, obviously it can help um, make sure you're not losing any, too much when you're charging phones or got the fridge on. I think if we turn the fridge on, actually, um, and then go back. You can see we're losing sort of one amp, uh, so we are depleting it too. Um, but obviously, as it gets up to temperature, the fridge it, it draws less power once it's reached temperature. Um, so this is like maximum, you know, drawing as much power to get it started. So you know, only two amps or uh, one two amps is is really good, um, and that'll become positive once it gets to sort of um, the right temperature. Right. right, so now I'll just quickly show you um, where I've put the um, the power flow. So we've actually put it in here. You can see it tucked in here. I've just used this for now. This is like an extension cable so we can um, use that. But I've got a, an all black one. Um, that it, that hopefully got, I can put it somewhere under the cabinet that can come all the way through to behind here where the original socket is and it, it can sit you know I can put it or velcro it or something attach it to the side here um, two sockets and it's got USB ports in it so once I get that I'll um, review that as well but if we come back over to here you can't see the EcoFlow fits perfectly um, in here. Um, might be a little bit hard to see, but essentially, because um, you've got an extension cord, you don't really need access to the back of this once it's plugged in. Um, and then what happens is, from the solar panel, I've got the charger for the EcoFlow, which you know I can just put plug into the back. Uh, well, just plug this in. It's already plugged into the back, so I can just plug this into the um, MPPT controller, um, and it will tell me on the app how much is being drawn. And actually, you can set the EcoFlow uh, Mini. This one's the Mini version. You can set this to um, stop once it hits sort of 85% ch uh, charge. Uh, that way, you know it's always sort of topped up when you're on the, when you're driving. Or if you are on, you know, on site and you're not, you've not got an electric hookup, 
you know you can draw a little bit of extra power from the solar that's been wasted through you know being on float or you know when it's on the float charge rather than it just sitting in float it can directly um, charge uh, the eco float if it's being used um, so yeah the intention is to use this with the plugs etc when we're off grid um, to you know boil kettles you know make a cup of tea um, you know all the usual stuff we've also got actually a little portable heater here as well so in the winter time you know we can actually charge the use the ecoflow to warm the up the pop top at the top which i think is going to be really useful because in the last winter that's when it was getting really cold is although you can heat the van most of the heat sits down downstairs unless you get some sort of um tubing or piping that can go you know from the the vents here and push them up to the you know into the top into the pop top um but not having to do that if you've got you know a little electric heater that you can put at the top um i might have a look to see if there's a, even smaller ones because you probably don't need that much heat um just something small but this one gives out quite a lot of heat but it um but it works perfectly so this off is the, the uh, connection into the back um this is 10 amp max um, but it, it gives you an option in the app to select between two and eight, I think it is. Um, you've got two sockets here, and you can turn those on. There you go. Or you can turn them off, and you can do that through the app as well. Um, you've got the same with um, output of cigarette lighter output uh, for sort of smaller items. Um, but yeah, I was using the Hoover um, boiling kettles on it, so you know it can withstand pretty much most appliances. Um, so the other piece is, you know, how fast it charges. So if you if I turn it around, actually, you can kind of see it's charging at 94 watts. It's going in. Now that will just keep it toppled up. I think I looked at the percentage, so it can, you know, through this it takes about an hour, to, hour and ten minutes to do 10% charge, which is fine if you just, you know, just just more of a trickle charge to keep it topped up. Um, once you're using it. So if you run it down to sort of 75% it'll take another hour or so to get it back to 85 just from the solar panels. Um, if I go to the solar, I mean it's, a, it's cloudy out here at the moment but you can kind of see it drawing. So it's minus 4 amps so it's drawing off the leisure battery um, you know but it will top it back up through the solar once you once it hits 85 percent so once the eco flow hits 85 percent um you know it, it you know then it won't need it and that'll go back to being charging the leisure battery the other way you can charge it as i found is obviously there's a socket here you might have um obviously it's a 230 volt uh, 50 hertz it's it doesn't use as much power but what it can do is if you plug this in you can reduce the input power to its lowest map lowest setting i think 200 watt 300 watt and it will charge like triple the speed um so you can get more um charge into the eco flow using this socket here and it doesn't trip it um if you don't go all the way to max um, if you keep it low, then it it will obviously work. But if you max it out, then obviously it just trips it because you know, it, it doesn't take that much. Um, so I just thought I'd share the app um, for the EcoFlow. Um, so you, once you set up your device, you'll see it here. Um, obviously, you can just tap. Um, it shows you uh, your percentage um, and the temperature, and you can set the range between empty and full. So I've set mine to max out at eighty-five percent. Um, this shows your input method, so once it is charging, right at the bottom is where you'll see the um, the trickle charge from the um, cigarette lighter input. And then you can also charge it through solar directly, or through um, obviously uh, AC. Um, as an output, you can turn on and off each of the pieces, so you can turn on the AC, um, as simple as that. Or you can turn it off, same with the DC, and then you've got USB, fast charge, etc. Um, so as I said, um, it takes about an hour and 10 minutes to charge 10% when on the lowest input. Um, and I'll show you that in the settings um, here. So this is the car input. This is the piece where you know I'm using to charge through um, the MPPT controller. So I set it at 8 amps, which is the maximum. 
but what you can do also and this is where you set the range sorry uh, between 15 and 85 percent so you can you know say how far you want so once it hits 15 percent it won't discharge any further it'll stop working um, same with the 85 it won't charge more than 85 percent that should protect the battery uh, sort of long term um, then you've got obviously uh, the AC charge so if you set this to um, 200 watt um, you can use that part underneath the car uh, car passenger seat um, which will double um, or triple uh, the um, recharge speed so it'll probably take like 20 minutes rather than an hour and 10 minutes but that's an option as well okay so just on the obviously link into the Victron MPPT controller um, so you can kind of see at the moment we are charging at 35 watt giving us about 2.6 amps uh, 2.6 amps yeah and you can see that on the actual VW control panel as well um, and it's in bulk states so that means it's charging um, as much as it can because um, the battery is sort of a I think the voltage makes a big difference so the battery voltage is 2.7 and it will stay in bulk until uh, you can do in the settings but I think 13 point something um, but you can choose what what state you want it to to sort of charge at so um you know once it hits sort of 13.4 i think or 13.2 it will go into um float mode um or if you've got your eco flow charging it will um, draw power from that um i've also added this smart battery sense at the bottom which gives uh, it tells the mpp to controller the temperature of the battery so it can kind of make sure that it's in the right ranges um, um so i think it, it obviously looks at that as well as to make sure that the charge and everything else is in in sync with the the temperature as well and it was only like um i think it's about 33 pounds off of amazon so you know hook that up to my rear so not the not the under the passenger side but the rear ledger battery um i fitted that onto that um if i click into it it is a car overcast day so it's not sunny it's not got direct sunlight so we're drawing 33 watts from a 200 watt panel 200 watts panel to two two 100 watt panels um so yeah not a huge amount but obviously on a cloudy day it's still better than nothing and it'll keep your battery topped up um i'm currently getting two amps as i say into the um into the main panel um so it will definitely top up my uh leisure battery um, because you don't want it to go down to a really low because um, I've had it in the past when I didn't have the solar where it would go and um, go so low it will say um, it will come up with an error message and all my lights in the back won't work um, and also it can damage the battery uh, if it goes that low so yeah I think having the solar has also helped making sure that the battery condition is it's optimal um, if I look at my history, uh, actually I'll go down through the settings just in case you don't know. So obviously the voltage of the solar that's coming in and the current amps. Um, so obviously quite low at the moment. And when it hits a sunny day, I've seen um, sort of hitting 140 watts. So that's about, couldn't be about 8 uh, to 9 amps. So obviously that, that can charge battery really quickly. So you only need a little, you know, a few hours of sun sunlight to really give a, a good boost to your battery um obviously the battery voltage key to you know the vw sort of controls uh and the mppt controller controls how much um, um volts um amps to charge the battery it reduces as it gets to sort of a higher number um obviously the temperature and then obviously states the state starts off in bulk and then it goes into um into a uh, float once it hits a certain level in the voltage and then at the very bottom is the load output that's directly from the mppt controller so that's sort of like if you're using it directly from that controller so that's where i plug in the eco flow and obviously then it will draw straight from that and you can see how much it's drawing as well and it can control the amount of flow that's coming out so you know if your if your battery or ledger battery is too low it won't pull anything into the um, eco flow it will make sure it focuses on the uh, battery first so that's really good and then obviously moving on to history you can kind of see um, over the last few days so it's not been sunny at all i've had probably one day of sunshine since um we had the massive um all the sunshine 
uh, probably a couple of months ago and now we're getting all of the the cloudy days and the rain now we're hitting sort of um, um autumn winter time so um you can see that over the last i think the last four five days you know we had a lot of going into wasted um into sort of float float stage so that's the you know in, on this day we had five hours of bulk charge and then we had six hours of float um so that could have been used to charge obviously the eco flow or whatever whatever's needed at the time it might be that both the eco flow and the battery are full charge so you, you know you will always have that wastage um I was doing a lot of testing on the EcoFlow, which was drawing a lot of power. So you can see right at the very bottom, the consumption. Um, so this is where it's good to have it connected directly to your MPPT controller, because you can see how much it's drawing um, and track that. See, it's 520 watt hours was being drawn. Um, and that's when I was testing the, um, the portable heater. Um, so it does draw quite a bit, but it can last probably, I say the heater could last about three hours on the highest setting and obviously you wouldn't put it on its highest setting for that long you'd just use it for maybe an hour or so uh, on the timer uh, just to keep you warm while you're falling asleep um and then you can kind of see you know last for three days it's been sort of yielding about 250 watt um you can see on this this is a sunny day actually on three days ago 134 watts was um some max um uh, because it was quite sunny for a few hours um and that topped the battery up quite quickly um, but you can see the last couple of days it's been 46 watt, 45 watt maximum um, because it's been overcast, cloudy and rainy. Um, today actually, you know, we've hit some sunlight, so we've hit 102 watt just for, you know, a couple of, um, I think, minutes where we had a direct sun. So that's um, obviously helping. Uh, and then right at the bottom it gives you your lifetime total, so lifetime 2 kilowatt hours. And to give you a sense, sort of sense, I mean, my house generally uses 10 to 12 kilowatt hours a day um possibly um so you know it's not that much that you know you're using in that within the van anyway um but you know i think it's really useful uh, if we go back to trends you can't see direct trends you know um as and when they happen um when you hit certain you know sunlight etc you kind of see sort of hit uh, what time is this uh, sort of 10 o'clock is hitting uh, sort of 95 to 96 watts of input, which is really good. All right, I'll stop it there. Um, hope, hopefully you found this useful. Um, if you've got any questions, etc., cetera, um, or you want me to go through anything, um, some tests or, you know, across the EcoFlow and the leisure batteries and, and the solar, let me know if you're, you know, if you're trying to, you're thinking about getting something like this and you just want a bit more information to see if it, it will help you um, for you, what you're trying, what, how you use your van. And, you know, the, you know, if you're going to France, you know, going to Europe and there is no electric hookup, you know, this just gives you the same convenience as if you would. Um, and, you know, for me, you know, not having to use my gas to heat up a kettle uh, just when you want a cuppa, you know, you know, I know it's like <laughs> quite expensive to just for, for tea and coffee, but it's, I think it's more than that it's more long-term usage you know um being able to um connect anything to and have like convenience having having sockets and being able to use like an air fryer or something if you take it away and you're going for you know a few weeks or a month away in europe you know you've got all the conveniences of home you know anywhere you go and you've also got you know unlimited power really with the solar panels um so that's really why i i've chosen uh, these things um but yeah hope you found it useful uh, speak soon bye